Checkpoint 4 mark scheme, this is on current voltage graphs. Uh, first one is quite an unusual question actually, so it makes you think a little bit. Uh, you've got to, rather than plotting a current voltage graph, we've got to work out the resistance. Um, so we're using the equation here, resistance equals voltage divided by current. So stick the numbers into your calculator with these, um, and you should get these answers. Just be careful, good habit, they won't penalise you, but good habit, write down three significant figures. You've got these numbers to three significant figures. So write your answers, even when you get 1.2, write 1.20, 3.00. Uh, plot them carefully on the graph, and I think it should look about like this. And then also, when they say plot a graph, that does include drawing the best fit line. So stick a best fit line through there, it will be a curve. I think they've given you that last point there, just to make clear it is a curve. Um, and you'll end it with a graph like that. Those are really easy marks. So you've got five possible marks there altogether. Don't be dropping those kind of marks in the exam, please. Okay, use your graph to estimate the resistance of the filament lamp when no current flows. Okay, well, okay, here we are when no current flows. Looking for the intercept here. Okay, obviously there'll be a little bit of margin for error according to how you've drawn the curve but we should have an answer somewhere around 0 0.9 ohms. Use your graph to determine the change in resistance of the filament lamp when the current increases from 0 to 1 amp. So we've already got 0 0.9. If we read it off at 1 ohm, oh, sorry, 1 amp, then we get a resistance of about 1.1 ohms. So we've gone 1.1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.2 ohms. Try and show some indication of how you've got this number because if your best fit curve isn't the same as theirs and you just write the answer down and they disagree with your answer, okay, then you might find you're not getting the mark for it. And then from 1 to 2, so we're going from 1.1 to 1.5, so 1.5, take away 1.1, the increase is about 0 0.4 ohm. Okay, calculate the power dissipated in the filament lamp when the current is 1 amp and 2 amps. So uh, our best equation to use here, because we've just worked out the resistance, is P equals I squared R. So with 1 amp, that's 1 squared times 1.1, which is 1.1 watts. And then at 2 amps, uh, we could use P equals VI, because that's in the table. But if we use I squared R again, that's 2 squared times 1.5, which is 6 watts. Okay, part C is a quite a difficult question. So using information from part B4, explain why the change in resistance of the filament lamp is less between 0 and 1 amps than it is between 1 amp and 2 amps. Okay, so we know hopefully that the resistance will go up, but the question is not why does it go up, why does it go up more between 0 and 1 amps than it goes between 1 and 2 amps? Well, if you look at these two numbers, okay, hopefully you can see that the change in the power is greater between um, 1 and 2 amps than it is between 0 to 1 amp. Um, so if we do the change in the power is more between 1 and 2 amps than it is between 0 and 1 amps. Therefore the change in the temperature is greater. Therefore the change in the resistance is greater. And that's why the resistance goes up more between those two um, currents than it goes up between those two currents. You've got that from the previous question where you saw it only went up 0 0.2 and then it went up 0 0.4 because the change in the temperature between 0 and 1 amp is not as big as the change in the temperature between, between 1 and 2 amps. So the change in the resistance is bigger too. Okay, question 2 is actually about voltage current graphs. Um, so the first one we've got an uh, a component that obeys Ohm's law. So remember, Ohm's law says that the current is proportional to the voltage at a constant temperature. So, okay, that's a proportional graph, a straight line through the origin. Um, and let's call that one A. And then our only thing then is we've got a lower resistance um, one, which is B. Component B has a lower resistance than A, so you have to think about this carefully. A lower resistance means you'll get more current for the same potential difference. So graph B must have a steeper gradient. Okay, on the axis of figure 2, draw the IV characteristics for a semi, uh, silicon semiconductor diode. So 
we can have, you don't need to have this really, but we can have over here at about minus 50 volts, they tend to break down. Then we need to go along the axis and then very steeply upwards here where this starts from about 0 0.6 volts again. Put the relevant voltage values on. Don't forget those two um, as well as the actual shape of the curve. Okay, so the most obvious thing is that um, as V increases, I increases. Okay, so that's a nice easy one mark to get you started. Um, but it's not proportional. Okay, you could point out that it's approximately proportional in this kind of region. But beyond that, it's not proportional, right, because... The current heats the filament so the resistance increases and the same effect happens in reverse. So like the um, fixed resistor but unlike the diode this is a symmetrical graph. It's the same in both directions. Okay, our third question, state with the reason which obeys Ohm's law. Okay, so we've just talked about that. This is the straight line graph. So the constant and wire. Why is that? Because I is proportional to V. Calculate the resistance of the tungsten filament lamp when V equals 1 volt. Okay, so the first thing is so we've got to be careful what we're doing now. This line here. Um, so at 1 volt, we're here. We have to go up to there and across and we'll get just less than 0 0.7 so something like 1 divided by 0 0.68 um, gives us a resistance of about 1.5 ohms. I'll give you again a little bit of slack on that but try and read the graph as carefully as you can. So we go up from here, draw it with a ruler so you do it better than I do, across from there, quite hard to do it on the pad on, on of the, honestly, so 2.25, so somewhere around 4.4, 4.4, 4 .4, 4 4.5 ohms. Okay, explain the change in resistance. Okay, so this is like slightly easier than the previous question. Look very similar. Okay, um, as the current increases, the filament gets hot. which increases the resistance. Okay, and then a little memorandum about resistivity. So a nice straightforward, actually, resistivity question. So rho equals Ra over L. Okay, so we've got A is 6 times 10 to the minus 8. We've got L is 0 0.8. And then the only tricky bit, is that we need to actually find the resistance of the wire, which we haven't done yet. So if we go back to here, you can pick any value you like, but let's go on 10 volts again. So 10 volts for the constantin wire, we get about 1.8 ohms, uh, sorry, 1.8 amps. So the resistance is V over I is 10 over 1.8, gives us about 5.8. 5 ohms, so you stick your 5.5 into that equation. Again, a little bit of margin for error on there. Should give you a value of about 4.6 times 10 to the minus 7 ohm meters. Try and get those units right for resistivity. Very common mistake to get that unit wrong. Okay, so last bit. Students required to obtain the IV graph for a filament lamp. Okay, so... Um, Please get a ruler right when you're doing this, but some sort of voltage supply, okay, you can draw a, some sort of battery or a power supply in there. We need the filament lamp. We need to record the current through the filament lamp. We need to record the potential difference across the filament lamp. And we need some way of varying the PD across the filament lamp with the variable resistor. So you can draw it this way around where you have, again, some sort of power supply all across a resistor and then you take off from that 
a PD to do a filament lamp and then still remember to get the voltage across the filament lamp so a circuit drawn something like that okay key points are ammeter in series with the bulb voltmeter in parallel with the, to the bulb some way of changing the current and the voltage